What is up everybody and Milo Murphy's Law. The law that says that anything bad that can happen will happen. Or the Disney XD channel show. So uh, yeah, I just, for some reason, this morning, um, this was a few days back mornings, if you're watching this on the correct date, the day that I'm filming this, February, whatever Super Bowl Sunday was, um, yeah, so, uh, I, I just heard of the show this morning from, uh, the mysterious Mr. Enner had it at the end of his Hammerman review, and, uh, I was watching it, and then uh, he had, like, the theme song playing, and I, I, I hear it, and I'm like, wait, is this, is, is that Weird Al? That's Weird Al! Weird, if you don't know who Weird Al is, just... There's the door. No, there's the door, actually, in my room. Right there. But, uh, please, check out Weird Al. Uh, he is an ama- He is the original parody artist. And he's hilarious. He's nothing like any of the parody artists of today. Even though I do like people like Bart Baker and Barely Productions, he comes up with original plots to put in to these different songs. Um, uh, my favorite one is the American Pie, um, American Jet- or. Soon I'll be a Jedi parody. I love that song. It's one of my favorites of all time. But uh, I love Weird Al. So I'm hearing this theme song and I'm like, is that Weird Al? And so I look up the theme song and sure enough, it's Weird Al. And then I'm like, well, is Weird Al starring in this show? So I scroll down and it's like, one of the characters is Weird Al. Automatically goes on YouTube to find the first fi uh, the f all the episodes that are on right now, and so far there's been five episodes. Technically ten because they have this eleven minute episode deal. The other thing that I got straight away from this is this Phineas and Ferb sequel, and technically yes it is. It's directed by uh, Jeff Swan uh crap. I don't want to get their names wrong. Dan Povenmire and Jeff Swampy Marsh, or is it Dan Swampy Marsh and Jeff Pov? I'm pretty sure it's the first. The former of the two. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I love Phineas and Ferb, and I love Weird Al. Let's see where this is going. So, to start off, uh, I'm, this, this is going to be a little bit different. I'm just going to be talking about the episodes that I've seen. And I've seen, of course, the first ten episodes. And Disney XD has this weird scheduling thing where, oh, look at this. We're not, we're going to make a show, promote it, then play the first five episodes in succession week after week after week after week after week, and then we're gonna like stop showing episodes and show a couple reruns for three months. And apparently on March or in March we're gonna get the next episode of this. And I'm like, why? Why can't you just do a season? Or maybe at least stop halfway. I, it might be halfway through the season. I doubt it because a ten episode season would suck. Technically twenty episodes, I guess. But, um, anyway, so let's just talk about the show. So it stars, uh, this kid named, uh, Milo, who, uh, is played by Weird Al, who's the main character, and he is the great, great, I, I forgot how many greats, he's the great, 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 great something grandson of whatever M Murphy, I think it was Milo Murphy, uh, who came up with a law that said anything bad that can happen will happen, so and everything bad happens to him. And so he meets this new kid named Zach, and Zach's just like, oh, well, what's wrong? And uh, why is everyone scooting away from you? And then he has his best friend named Melissa, who always helps him out of his problems. Um, and, you know, you got... What I really like about this show, it's formulaic. I, Jeff Swampy Marsh and Dan Meyer know how to do this formula. They did it with Phineas and Ferb, they're doing it with the show. I can tell. In Phineas and Ferb, it was so, 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 so apparent that they're doing the same thing over and over again. You got this initial plot with Phineas and Ferb, and then you got this side plot with Perry and Dr. Doof. And it was just, it was good. It was really good. And to me, it never got old, but I saw other people getting so tired of it, and I understood why. There were a couple episodes that were just like, oh, fuck, dude, I've already seen this, man. Come on, give me something different. But, um, this show is not going that route, and it's very obvious that it's not going that route, because it does certain things. I believe the first four episodes, or first two episodes, um, they're, they follow the same formula. Uh, 
or the first, actually it's like the first two episodes, which is the first episode. They they have two episodes in one. So when I say episode, I'm going to be talking about the first two, the second two, third two, whatever. That's the, the episodes. So the first episode is formulaic, uh, both of the parts. The second episode kind of goes off that formula a little bit. Sure, stuff still happens, disaster happens, it's going to bring them off track because of Milo. But it's very understanding. Like, it's not going to be the same exact thing. Um, the only thing that's a little bit exactly copycat from Phineas and Ferb is... And it's hilarious still. It's really hilarious. Um, he has this dog called D-O-G. Spelled... It's spelled like D-I-O-G-E, but it's pronounced like D-O-G. Dog. That's the joke. But anyways, uh, he comes in at random times and he's, they're just like, Go home, D-O-G. You're not supposed to be at a football game or something like that. Um, it's funny. It's really funny. Just about every time that he does it. And D.O.G., he doesn't talk. He doesn't have a spy plot going on. So it's not a complete copycat from Phineas and Ferb, which would be Perry the Platypus. Uh, but it's very similar. It's very similar art style. It's But it's fun. It's a really, really fun show. I enjoy watching the show. Um, another thing, like, they don't need an introduction to the characters. Like, a lot of shows like to go into this... Hi, my name's Milo, and today I'm going to be doing this because this has happened and this has been my whole life story. So I'm just going to tell it to the audience now instead of letting them figure out everything on their own. They allow us, the only person that gets a little bit of an introduction is Zach, and that's just because he's the new kid in town, and I really, really like it. That's, it's, it was a terrific pilot, I will say, a terrific pilot. And so far, there's been a couple episodes that I just didn't care for that much. But there have been so many, like, out of the ten, I think seven of them are great. One of them's, like, okay, and then two of them are just, like, eh, not too good. Including, like, like the third and fourth episodes, probably. Uh, then again, don't take, I'm just going off of what I, I've watched all these today, but, like, I can't remember everything, of course. But, uh, it brings in characters, it, oh, <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right now. I forgot to mention this, and it's a comedy, and it has got perfect comedy. It's rarely said a joke that I didn't at least chuckle at. It is hilarious. Um, normally, they do bring the comedy off of the other characters, but I mean, Weird Al's there. You got Sabrina Carpenter there. Uh, even this Zach guy, I forgot the actor's name, and I'm so upset that I can't remember, but he's funny. And then you got, like, Elliot, the car, uh, not the car, the safety czar, uh, hilarious, especially, like, when the duck comes into the show and just, like, starts attacking him. Hilarious. It's, like, a three-minute segment, and it's still funny out of an 11-minute runtime. Um, and it's just, like, it, they nail the comedy down. They also have these two, uh, villains who are, like, time travelers trying to preserve pistachios or something. I don't know. I just read that off the Wikipedia. But, uh, yeah, and they're played by Jeff, uh, Swampy Marsh and Dan Povenmire. But, uh, they, anytime they're on screen, they're going to give you a laugh. Anytime a lot of these people are on scene, they're going to give you a laugh. It's a comedy, number one, and it nails the comedy big time. Like, I cannot wait for the next few episodes of this show. It's not going to flop, and it's not going to be a copycat of Phineas and Ferb, even though the art style is different, and they do live in the same city, apparently, because in, like, the last episode that was made, they show a map, and it's got the Danville map. Um, so, yeah, they don't live in the tri-state area, I don't think, but they live in the same city. Uh, but it's hilarious. I cannot express how much I love this show. Go check the show out if you have not seen it. It's called Milo's Murphy's Law. Milo Murphy's Law. Um, it's got a terrific theme song, too. The only complaint I have about it is that they say fly. I fucking hate that word. I, when you're describing something, don't describe something to me as fly. You can say lit all you want. I don't give a shit. A lot of people are so sick and tired of people saying lit. I don't care, to be honest. I, I get why it's annoying, but, I mean, I, hell, I'll even say it every once in a while. But my word is fly. Like, Sugar How You Get So Fly, that almost made the honorable mentions for my top 10 worst hit songs 2016. I hate that word so much. I don't know, it's just so annoying. 
But uh, besides that, terrific theme song. And speaking of songs, it's got Weird Al. There are songs in the show. Now, they're not going to be like full-out three-minute songs and everything. They're, they're about, I think the longest one was like a minute and a half. And that's because it was about an episode of a play. So, I mean, you kind of have that. Um, so, going back over everything, uh, animation looks terrific. And it looks a little bit more polished than Phineas and Ferb, too. And Phineas and Ferb, I never really liked the character design, especially of Phineas and Ferb themselves. But I love, I, especially D.O.G. That dog is adorable. Like, I, I love D.O.G. They didn't even need to, like introduce the character at all. They could have just had him on screen. And that dog is so adorable. I love it. Um, it has terrific background characters. These characters, re the recurring characters, they reappear, especially like Elliot, like uh, the underground guy. Uh, other people, uh, the pistachio guys. Um, it's, t it's got terrific parodies. It parodies Doctor Who. I never watched Doctor Who, but from my limited knowledge of it, because one of my friends, Mitchell... Uh, Mitchell, if you're watching this, hey. Uh, he watches Doctor Who, and from the limited knowledge that I gained from him about it, it looks like a terrific parody of it. And it's so good. This show, in fact, I didn't even think about it being as good as it is until I'm just saying this stuff out loud. Terrific characters, terrific animation, terrific songs, terrific just stories. Like, the stories are, hell, even original. Uh, they, some of them are loosely based off of other things, but they're mostly original. I love this show to death, and I feel like it's going to become an instant favorite. Is it going to be the next Gravity Falls, or the next uh, Phineas and Ferb? The next, I I've never watched this personally, but I've heard that it's amazing, and a lot of people are talking about Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Um, I don't know. I really don't. The only reason why I checked out the show was because of Weird Al, and I'm so glad that I did because it is hilarious. I love Milo, but I, hell, even more, I love Melissa. Melissa is an amazing character. That is how you do a best friend character. They always get that wrong. I didn't even like Isabella from um, Phineas and Ferb that much, but I love, love Melissa in uh, Milo Murphy's Law. She's an amazing character. I also like how they don't have this little relationship thing between Milo and uh, Melissa that they kind of had between Phineas and Isabella. It was always apparent, and it was kind of annoying at times. You had episodes that would be based on Isabella's love for Phineas, and Phineas never got the clue. And um, even though the last episode was so sweet, uh, it's hinted that Milo has a crush on this other girl named Amanda, who's an interesting character in herself. Uh, but not the greatest character in the world, so, and I don't know if they're going to take that anywhere. And it's also uh, this stuck-up douchebag that hates Milo. I forgot his name, because it's only he's only in like the first like two or three episodes, and then he like, disappears for the rest of the episodes. Anyways, he has a crush on Melissa, or it's hinted at that he has a crush on Melissa. Uh, and Zax has this crush on this one cowgirl from, like some ranch in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if any of those are going to go anywhere. I'm figuring those first two will. I don't think the last one is. I think that was just a one one shot. She might appear in a cameo later. But I, cameos, they do them perfectly. I love the show. Please go check out the show. It's amazing. I've never even heard of Milo Murphy's Law, but it's actually a very interesting law. Um, and it's not that big of a law either. So, uh, yeah. I love the show. Go check it out. I'm probably going to be talking about it way, way more. Um, also, I'm thinking of doing two lists here. I don't know what number I'm going to do, but I'm thinking of doing like 50 worst films of all time. I'm probably going to cut that back to 25 or 30 and have like a bunch of honorable mentions. So let me know what you think about that and how much I should do. Also doing top 20 animated theme songs, and you should probably see Milo Murphy's Law on that list. Low, because of the fly comment, but it should be on the list. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below which I should either review or react to next. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.